Hi there. So we have a lot to do and not much time to do it. Isn't that always seem like the case? And so I have some success tips to share with you, tips that I personally have used uh, through all the years that I was in college with kids and with working and with a busy life to get the very most possible out of the class that you're in. So let's get started. I'm going to cover four different things, four areas, and I'm just going to go into them briefly. If you need more resources or have more questions, we'll get to that part at the end. So the first thing we're going to look at is covering content because there's a lot to cover. Okay, so where do you start? How do you approach it? When you have to make a choice, what do you let go? The second part is watching video because I like to incorporate videos in all of my classes, my own videos and videos that I find because it's very, at least for me, good to have a visual image of what's going on. The third thing we're going to look at is setting reminders. Like, how do you even remember all of this stuff? What can you do? There's deadlines and, you know, just all kinds of stuff. What can you do to remember these things? And then the last part is ask the question, what do you do if you get stuck? So let's start on the covering content because you're going to find a ton of content in my classes. And I don't expect you to read every word of everything. But there is kind of a priority list of how you should approach different pieces of content in the class. The first thing you should always do, watch the weekly overview video called What Are We Doing This Week? That's me talking to you about how everything's put together. So make sure you watch that first, even if you only have time on Monday to watch that video. It'll watch it at the beginning of the week. It'll get things set up for you so you know where to start and you know what's expected. The second thing, take a good look at the class schedule. And we'll look at that a little closer in a few minutes. But take a good look at the class schedule because everything's laid out on there. Deadlines are on there. Yes, the assignments in the class have deadlines on them. But in the class schedule, you have one place where everything is located. And so review that every week so you know what's coming up. The third thing in order of priority, I've made some videos like I don't really lecture, but if there's anything that gets considered a lecture, it will be in one of these PK Professor Curdy original videos. And so if you have to make a choice, watch those next. Usually there's a PK original that goes along with um, different assignments. Sometimes there's special content areas that I want to, um, that I have some insights to share with you or some fun resources, and I put that into a video. So watch those. Then scan your assignments. So there'll be lots of different tiles organized in a certain way. You'll see that when you get in there. At least scan over the assignments. Some are going to be quick. Some might take 20 minutes. Some might take a couple of days. And so you don't want to wait until Sunday to look at things for the first time. You want to look at them ahead of time so you know how to plan your week out. Then there's lots of other resources. I'll put in um, other videos to watch. Sometimes there's articles. All of these things support the idea for the topic that we're looking at. And finally, I kind of put this last, last but not least, look at the textbook, but don't try to read the whole thing. Like, I don't think I actually read an entire textbook my whole time in college. However, get really good at scanning the chapters. Just flip through the pages, see what topics are being covered. Um, if you find something that looks interesting, read that part a little deeper. Look at the pictures, read the subtitles. Um, are there any checklists of things? Like, here's the main points. Again, when you find something that you find really interesting, dig in deeper or save it for later to dig in. Um, I use those little post-it note flags in my books to help me get back to spots. The quizzes for each chapter are open book. If you've actually flipped through the chapter and you have an idea of what's getting covered, then you can get done with the quiz in 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. If you don't, it might take you a couple of hours because you'll be flipping through looking like, hmm, I don't know where this thing is. And so you're going to take a lot of time. So I would attack things in this order. Start with the weekly overview video, work your way down through the content, um, check things off on the schedule as you do them. Now, the next thing I want to hit is watching video because there's lots and lots of video. I tend to talk a little slower when I make my video because I want a good video caption. Uh, transcript to be produced. 
But I'll be honest, even when I listen to my own videos, I put on the playback speed to one and a half or faster. So in a YouTube video, if you look for the little gear icon down at the bottom, then you can click that and change playback speed. Some people can listen to it at double speed. I can't, that's a little too fast for me. So usually 1.5 or 1.75 speed I can listen to. And then if you need to, you can play it back slower if there's something you wanna catch. I always try to make note of the length of time the video is. So when I'm first going through, I'll kind of like, you know, make note of all the times. So I know hmm, this week I've got to spend, you know, an hour and a half on video or, you know, two hours on video or whatever it is. Okay. There's going to be quite a bit of video because it's a really good way to demonstrate ideas. And then I always like to put on the CC button, the captions, because me personally, if I watch it and read it at the same time, then that's pretty effective for me. So if that works for you, put on the captions. Now, the question I get a lot from students when I say, how can I help? They frequently say, well, can you send me a reminder? No, I can't send you a reminder. And here's why. Because there's a lot of you and there's one of me and I don't know what you need to be reminded of. And I don't know how you need to be reminded. Like if somebody just tells me something, I'm not going to remember it. I totally won't remember it. If I write it down, make my own list, then it gets in my head. For lots of other people, if you hand them a list, that's not going to process, but they need to hear it. So there's lots of different ways. So the key here is you create a reminder system that works for you. All right. I just put a couple of ideas up here, you know, use a Google calendar or a paper calendar. Set alarms on your phone. My husband does that. He sets alarms for everything on his phone when something comes up and then it pops up. Um, I use tons and tons of post-it notes, you know, use the class schedule, stick a string on your finger, like whatever works, right? So I can't recommend Google Calendar highly enough because you can create your own calendars, like you can have a calendar for each class, and then you can turn them on or off um, by checking the box. And so they'll either show up here on the main calendar section or not. And you can set reminders. So it'll send you an email. It'll pop up a notification. There's lots of different ways to get a calendar. And so as soon as I get the due dates for something, I plug them in on the calendar and I don't just plug in the due date. I'll put something on there that says, you know, start this project a couple of days ahead of time, or I'll put the notifications on, not to notify me on the day it's due, but to notify me a week ahead or three days ahead. You know, whatever system works really well for you. Calendars are great. And Google Calendar, you can get it in the web browser, you can get it on your phone, there's just super easy. So using the schedule, this is one of your best reminders, you'll have the opportunity to copy this into your own Google Drive. And each of these boxes are actually check boxes. So you can click it, it will check off the item when you've done it. That's a good way to keep track of what you've done and what you haven't done. You'll notice there's also due dates on there. Now in a short winter intercession class, the due dates aren't as regular as I would like them to be because of how we have to compact the class. In a regular semester class, full semester class, then it's a lot easier to keep the due dates on the same time every week. However, whichever case it is, the due dates will be published here. So you can definitely uh, find them, plug them into your reminder system, do whatever works. Now, I'll be honest, this is how I made it through graduate school. And I didn't bring a stack here. I have a huge, I have a box of post-it notes, different sizes, different shapes, different colors. Some have lines on them. Some are little reminder ones. Like um, it's like a problem. I can't buy enough post-it notes. But what I would do is I, each class would get a different color. And then when a project came up, I would write the project down and break it into the smaller pieces, one post-it note for each piece. And I had a whole wall that looked like this, okay? And I had things lined up on the wall so that I could see the class and I could see the project and I could see all the pieces of the project. And I did this right in the beginning. And it was something super satisfying about saying, oh, I did that one and pulling the post-it note down and throwing it away. So if post-it notes are your thing, give it a try. And even if they're not your thing, maybe give it a try. It's very visual. Um, it's easy to close the computer. It's easy to turn off your phone. It's not so easy to ignore the post-it notes on your wall because they're there. 
Now, this last strategy has to do with asking the question. So I frequently, um, especially on the intake surveys and the syllabus quiz and things, one of the biggest challenges students will tell me is they're afraid to ask the question. And I'll be honest, that's my whole job. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to answer the question. Okay, so help me do my job. And there's a couple of places you can do that. So let me move to the middle here a little more, make that a little easier so you can see everything. The Discord help desk channel, number one place to ask a question. If you're unclear about an assignment, um, if you're wondering about a due date, anything in general, ask it there. Because not only do I see that, but other classmates see that. And we have a group of tech wizards that are alumni students that hang out and they might see it. A lot of people might see it, which is good because that means you'll get an answer faster. So Discord help desk first and foremost, okay? Um, if it's a question of a private nature, if it's something to do with your grades or an emergency came up, or there's something that's preventing you from getting your work done, well then by all means, send me a message on your Discord notes channel, because that's a private channel. I won't answer grades in the help desk channel, but I will answer them in the notes channel, okay? Because grades are a private thing. So that's good for confidential um, conversations. Now, text messaging is good. Like I like text messaging, I text all the time. It's not a place for a big, long philosophical conversation. But if you have a really quick question or you need to notify me of something really quick, text messaging is great. My number's on the syllabus, plug me in as your contact. Um, all I ask is that when you message me, you let me know who you are and what class you're in, because then I have context for how to respond. And finally, we have Zoom and we have voice channels in Discord. Sometimes you could have 20 emails going back and forth, but honestly, sometimes the best thing is just to jump onto Zoom, do a screen share, and let me see what's causing you the problem, because then so it's almost always super easy to solve. So we have these four channels for asking the question, Discord help desk, Discord notes, um, text message, and Zoom and voice channels. So let's do this. Let's have a happy, successful, productive, interesting, curious-driven uh, semester. I'm looking forward to working with all of you.